And you kind of touched base on this already, but how did the wrestlers get paid? Did they get paid at the end of the night? Did they get a check right written to them? Did they get paid every week? Do you know how that went? I only know from my experience in our office, and there was a business week. And I don't know if it went from Monday through Sunday or Friday to Thursday, but they were paid one check a week based on whatever they earned, where they wrestled, where they were on the card, you know, top talent, mid-level, low-level talent, what the gate was. Uh, Because every time there was a show, say it was Monday night in Fort Worth, and the gate was $12,000, then the front office under the owner's direction would break down what came off the top for the business and then what went into other expenses, the building, the security, and all that kind of stuff. And then there was a good chunk of it that was divided up and given to the talent. And obviously, if you had Von Erickson Freebirds on the card, they're going to get more. But then you Mm -hmm. paid your mid-level people and your low-level people and your announcers and your referees and whoever did that kind of stuff. Gotcha. Um, Believe it or not, this is the number one question fans have. We've already kind of touched on it the last show, but everybody wants to know about the rampant drug use in WCCW. I think that's because so much more, we know so much more now than we knew then. But did you ever witness this going on? Did were you aware of it going on? Did did you ever see it going on? What can you tell us about that? Tony, I have I have marveled to the point of really what I would describe as gracious and humble gratitude that I almost felt very mysteriously protected from that. Mm. Now, remember, I didn't travel with the guys. I worked Friday nights in Dallas and Monday night in Fort Worth and occasionally went other places with them. Went to San Antonio several times, Lawton, Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, flew to Boston, Massachusetts uh, a couple of times for shows up there. So I wasn't traveling with them, and I didn't do the nightlife stuff after it was Mm -hmm. over. I got in my car and went home, went to bed. Right. Uh, because, you know, on Monday night, I was I was teaching school uh, in the daytime. I had to be at work at 730 the next morning. Uh, by the time Friday night came around, I'd worked all week, did that. I was tired and went home. And I wasn't a, a partier anyway. Sure. So I was really insulated. I heard things here and there. And then the last three years or so, maybe four, I was there, I became aware uh, that there was a lot of drug use because by then Gino was gone and he had the cocaine problem. It's been well described. Uh, the Von Erichs got on painkillers and other things. It was finally, you know, people began to admit that David Von Erich's death, and this was like three years after he died, was while it was natural causes, the natural causes were induced by drug abuse. Right. Uh, so, you know, all that became aware of me, but, you know, yeah. I never I really you. was, was uh, even put in temptation's way. And as a young single guy, I'm not sure how I would have handled it uh, if I had been. That's why I say I feel very mysteriously protected. <laughs> 